if we are thanking God for the wonders of our being, then as we celebrate the memorial, uh, the ceremony and uh, birthday of John the Baptist, we need to prepare our hearts for the Lord. Preparation is very necessary in every aspect of life. And a good preparation gives good results. Therefore, in most traditional setup around the globe, the appearance of kings and queens is announced to the people to bring unity and the preparation of the people's mind and heart. Such was the work of John the Baptist, whose ceremony and birthday we celebrate today. As a Thanksgiving Day, it reminds us of John's main purpose. As a forerunner, he was to prepare the way of the Lord and to point the whole world to direction of Christ, our Lord and Savior. The song of the prophet Isaiah heard in the first reading about the faithful servant of God who will be the light of the people, thus giving mission of gathering God's people could be applied perfectly unto Jesus Christ our Savior. Hence, John Gospel clarified it immediately that John was not the light, but came to testify the light. John chapter 1, verse 8 following. However, like the early prophet, John the Baptist was also given the task of bringing people back to God. And especially, like Elijah, John was to turn the hearts of parents to their children and the heart of children to their parents. As Malachi puts in chapter 4, verse 6, and Luke chapter 1, Verse 17. This was fulfilled when the angel Gabriel announced to Zachariah the marvelous birth and mission of John, which was to show the mercy and favor of God in preparing the hearts and the minds of his people for the coming of Christ our Savior. In the birth of Jesus and in the birth of John the Baptist, we see the grace of God broken forth into the world, broken by sin and without hope. However, John's humility remained incorruptible. Even when his fame spread and was confronted of his identity, John made it clear in a plain word he is uh, just a forerunner to prepare the way and was unworthy to unloose the master's sandals. Fellow Christians, like John, it also points to our call in life as Christ's faithful. When we are disappointed, 
with what we are to achieve in life, in our studies, in our marriage life, and taking care of our children, and even in our workplaces, our work to work we do, we should first think of our reward with God at the end of time. We pray and thank him for making us look wonderfully and cheerfully, just as the psalm puts, thank God for my being or for your being. And like John, and through us, also God's glory will be manifested in the lives of many, those around us, our friends, our wives, our husbands, our children. The Baptist, as you know, started his task even before his, before his birth in his mother's womb. When he, as we know or we've heard about or we've been praying about in the visitation episode. And we know what happened there when Mary went to Elizabeth. At that time, John was somewhere there, hiding there. John had no teeth, just as you as well as my, we have about 32 teeth in, in, in us. John, no teeth, with a gum, praise and glorify God. And it was the mother who can, it, it, it is only women who can describe this perfectly. When children are very happy in the womb of their parent. This was to fulfill the song of Isaiah that God chooses his servants before they are born and giving them names in the womb, just as Jeremiah put. And also Samson, Jesus, and John, we are celebrating his birthday today. People of this nature, their math is always described as a sharpened sword and a sharpened arrow. And this, in John's, we see clearly the message he gave to Herod. The gospel reading of today also marks the beginning, the dawn of the new day, the transition from the time of remembrance of the promises of the Lord to the time of their fulfillment. John's parents, although were advanced in age and Lisbeth was barren, they were not hopeless. And God listened to their prayer and their cry, made them aware that all things are possible with him. Therefore, with God, everything is possible. Just as we have it in Luke chapter 1, verse 37. This made their family and friends around them marveled at the wonderful way in which God has blessed them with a child. The mysterious and, and mysteries which surrounded the birth of John and his naming helped broke the prophetic silence of the previous centuries. When he began to speak the word of God to the people of Israel, asking them to repent and believe in the gospel. Therefore, like the Old Testament prophets, John's message also childered the people of God for their unfaithfulness and try to awaken true repentance in them. John's message and mission ended him up to prison 
and death, a victim of vengeance, a victim of vengeance of a jealous woman, Herodias. Yet John did not claim ownership of anything. He said, I am not he. Therefore, as messengers of salvation, and as this message we'll be hearing is meant for those of us who fear God, we need to act according to it, and we will be blessed. And finally, like John, the Lord Jesus Christ invites us, each and everyone here today, to make our lives a free will offering to God and to fill us with his glory. Therefore, may our celebration of the life of Jesus and especially John as we celebrate today his birthday, keep our minds and our hearts focused on our call as Christians and as Catholics to help prepare the way of the Lord in our lives, in our workplaces, in our schools, in our churches, in our communities, and in the lives of others, and to help us repent and believe in the good news. Because if we get to know ourselves, we will be able to work ahead and prepare well our hearts for the coming of Christ in every situation. And through that, we will also be blessed. We thank God for our being. Therefore, we pray that he also help us to be good instruments of his word.